Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video series, I've been showing how to use an API as a client and how to create an API on the server side as a service. In this video, I'm going to continue my most recent video where I was talking about different ways that you could deploy a Flask app or more generally a web app to Heroku, which is a backend as a service. The two main ways to do this that I specified are highlighted here in my interview app.py file I have open in VS Code. So first I said that we could deploy the app directly on Heroku's Ubuntu stack. In order to do this, we had to declare a proc file and a requirements.txt. Since what I was deploying was a Flask app, the requirements.txt is a file that specifies all of the Python dependencies of the app. So here's what that requirements.txt looks, looks like. I was only declaring Flask as a dependency, which is the micro web framework I was using to build the web app and its version, which is what I'm currently using. The proc file is used by Heroku in order to know how to deploy your app. So all I was saying is that the process type that I'm trying to deploy is a web app and here's how you essentially execute or start the web app. Essentially you invoke Python and run interview app.py, which is this file right here, which when invoked directly from command line, this if statement will evaluate to true and it's going to run my Flask app. So in that previous video, I went through how to do approach number one. Now I wanna talk about approach number two, which is a more portable solution that uses Docker. If you haven't heard of Docker before, I would encourage you to check out some of my previous videos introducing Docker. Essentially what we wanna do is define our own Docker image that represents our app and deploy the app as a Docker container, which is an instance of that image. To do that, instead of using the Ubuntu stack, um, just for a heads up, the stack is the operating system image that's used for your app. Instead of using the Ubuntu stack on Heroku, we'll use the container, container stack in order to do this. There are a few different ways to do approach number two that I want to outline in detail. All of them involve what's called a Docker file, which isn't specific to Heroku. In order to create a Docker image that represents your app and all of its dependencies that are needed to run it, you have to declare the build specification for your image in a special file called the Docker file. So in order to do either 2A, 2B, or 2C for all the different sub approaches for approach number two, we're gonna have to declare a Docker file. So that's what I wanna do in this video. I want to lay the groundwork for 2A, 2B, and 2C by starting with what is a Docker file? How do we define a Docker file for this Flask app? And then we'll go through 2A, 2B, and 2C in order to see different ways we can deploy this app as a Docker container to Heroku. All right, so let's start by creating a Docker file. Be sure to name the file exactly as I've written here. You can see as soon as I finish writing Docker file, VS Code uh, gave us that cute little whale logo <laughs> next to our Docker file file in this uh, project explorer here because it recognized this special file name. All right, in the Docker file, we're going to essentially specify how to build our Docker image for our app. Comments in a Docker file are just like comments in Python. We can use a single pound sign. So I'm gonna make a comment here that a Docker file specifies how to build a Docker image. One of the many cool things about Docker is how when we create an image, we essentially specify a base image and then we layer our additional dependencies on top of that base image to create our image. And those dependencies are everything that our app needs that isn't in the base image. So we have quite a few options for what we wanna use for our base image here. I'm not using too many Python specific things. In fact, if you look at my requirements.txt from approach number one, uh, the only non-standard Python library I'm using is Flask. So I could start with a uh, base image for Python 3. 
The base image that I'm going to start with to be consistent with my video series, namely the video series that included how to use uh, Anaconda 3 Python distribution Docker container as your development backend or your development environment for Python, I'm going to use the Continuum IO Anaconda 3 Docker image. So let me pull that up. Let's do Docker Hub Anaconda 3. And we'll take a look at it just so you know exactly what I'm referring to. So hub.docker.com Continuum IO Anaconda 3. Okay, this is an image for the Anaconda 3 Python distribution. You can see here, see here what the most recent tag is, 2020.11. So that's what we're going to use as our base image. This is going to include Flask, which is nice. It's also going to include a lot of uh, common data science and numerical computing libraries that we don't need for this app. So it's going to be kind of overkill. But it's going to be nice because it's extensible for other projects since it has so many extra libraries included in it. All right, so to declare my base image, we use the from keyword and then the identifier for the image. So that would be uh, the organization continuum IO and then the name of the in image, Anaconda3, and then the tag 2020.11. Okay, so from this image, now we declare all of the extras on top of this image that we need for our app. So first, I'm gonna put an add command here to say add all of the contents of this current working directory to be the contents of a directory in the image. Okay, so the image uses the Linux file system. Okay, you can take a look at the base image, for example, that this Anaconda 3 image is based on in its Docker file. And you'll see that it's based on a lightweight uh, Debian Linux image. Okay, so we can copy all of the contents of our current working directory, which is our project directory, into this directory root code in the images file system. Now, I essentially want to CD into this directory at runtime, meaning I want to specify the current working directory, so I'll write workdir, to be that root code. The reason why I want to do this is because the last thing that I need to specify in this Docker file is how do you start the image, right? What should be executed? Very similar to what I did with the proc file where I said for the web process type, run python interview app.py to start the web framework, to start the web server. I'm gonna do the same thing here. And like I said, root code is going to contain all of the contents of the current working directory. So in order to use a relative path, I'm going to need to change that current working directory to be root code. All right, so last thing I'm going to add here is the entry point for my Docker image such that at runtime when it's containerized, it is going to execute just like my proc file, Python, and then interview app.py. So that's it for the Docker file. Just to repeat, this is going to specify how to build a Docker image. Okay, our base image is going to be the Anaconda 3 image, the same image that I've been using as a container backend for development in this video series. Like down here, you can see in VS Code, I'm connected to an instance of this image. Next, I'm going to copy over all of the project files, put them in a directory called root code, make that root code the current working directory so that I can use a relative path to specify how to launch this image as a container. What I want to do is run the Flask app. And this is the command to run the Flask app. All right, so now I'm going to save this. Before I move on, I wanna emphasize that in a previous video, we had made some changes in order to make sure that we could launch our Flask app on Heroku. Okay, I just want to highlight them here because they're easy to forget and I want to emphasize that I'd already made the changes in a previous video. Okay, so first, don't forget to set your debug to false. Okay, we don't want to deploy with debug set to true. We set the host to be this special IP address because at compile time, we don't know what the IP address is going to be that Heroku is going to assign to our app. So we use a special IP address, which from the server's perspective means all IP addresses on this network interface. 
And then lastly, we set the port to whatever port Heroku sets as an environment variable, which we can grab using the Python OS module. All right. Now, from here, we can do 2A, 2B, or 2C. Let's start with 2A. Okay, build a Docker image locally and push the image to a container registry. And Heroku has its own container registry we can push the image to. So I'm going to head over to my Mac terminal. Here I am. And I'm going to show you how you can create a Docker image. What we'll do is we'll use the docker build command in order to build a Docker image from our Docker file that we just created. So in order to do this, you will have to have Docker installed on your host machine. So your Windows, your Mac, your Linux, and make sure that you can run Docker from command line. So the command is going to be docker build dash T. And the dash T is going to allow us to provide a name and a tag for our image. So I don't have an organization, but I could do say like example slash interview where example is my organization or I can just say interview app or something like this and then a colon in the tag and I'll just put latest for the tag because this is going to be the latest version of this image and then we'll have a path to the directory with the docker file so this should be your top level project directory so as you can see, based on my Z shell prompt here, I am in my API service fund directory. So I'm just gonna use dot, which represents the current working directory because this directory has my Docker file. All right, so you can see it went through three steps from this image and it was able to find this image, add all of the files in this current working directory over to root code, change the working directory to root code and then exporting to image, and then it says writing image, naming to Docryo library interview latest. So what's awesome is I just created my first Docker image. I can take a look at all of my images with Docker images, and here it is. Interview tag latest image ID created 35 seconds ago, and you can see it's the same size as the Continuum IO Anaconda 3 image, because that was our base image and I really didn't add much to it, right? Just a few files uh, that I have here in my current working directory. I can even show those here. Okay, so for this, I didn't need the proc file or the requirements.txt. I just needed that Docker file because that's what the Docker build command uses to create the image. Okay, now we are ready to do 2A, which is See if I can get this to hide, there we go. Uh, build a Docker image locally, check, and push the image to a container registry. All right, so you are going to need to have the Heroku command line interface installed on your host machine for this to work. And just like how we use Docker from CLI, you're going to need to have the Heroku command or the Heroku executable added to your path so that you can use Heroku from the CLI, from the command line interface. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to push this image that we just made to Heroku. Okay, I'm going to head over to Heroku now and I am going to delete that interview app that I created in a previous video and I'm going to make it again. This time I'm gonna make it using 2A. So let me delete the app. Okay, fantastic. I'm gonna make it. And then here under deployment method for approach one, we chose GitHub connect to GitHub. This time I'm gonna use container registry, use Heroku CLI. Okay, and then we've got some instructions down here for how to deploy our Docker based app. Okay, and if you haven't installed the Heroku CLI, there'll be a link here for instructions on how to do it. So pretty much all we have to do is follow these instructions. I am going to note that 
when we get here to push your Docker based app, it says build the Docker file in the current directory and push the Docker image. This Heroku command is going to look for a Docker file in the current working directory and build the image just like we did with a Docker build command. But I'll also show you how you can use an image that you've already built and not use this command from Heroku in order to push it to their registry. All right, so let's start by logging into Heroku. I'm going to install Heroku real quick here on my Mac, and then we'll do Heroku login dash I. The dash I is nice because it'll allow you to authenticate at the CLI instead of having to authenticate from the browser. Okay, great. It looks like Heroku successfully installed. So let's log in. Make sure that you enter your Heroku email and password. Awesome. Once you're logged in, what we're going to do is we're going to log in to the Heroku registry. So Heroku container login. Okay, now that we're logged in, what we're going to do is we're first going to see how can we push the image that we've already created. So to do that, we're gonna to have to tag the image using Heroku's naming convention. So we're gonna do Docker tag and then the image name, which is interview latest, registry.heroku.com slash, and the name of our app. So that'll be the name of your app, the one here from Heroku. So interview-app-gina, or whatever you called yours, interview-app-gina, and the process type, which is web. So now you can see I have an image here, registry.heroku.com slash interview app gina slash web. Awesome. Now we're gonna do Docker push and we're gonna push this to registry.heroku.com slash and the name of our app. So once again, this will be the same name that we just tagged our image with. So mine's interview-app-gina and then slash process type, which for us is web. Okay, this will take a little bit of time because we know it's got to move 2.71 gigs over the internet to the Heroku registry. When this is done, we've successfully pushed an image to Heroku's container registry. We just have to release this image as our app's container. So we'll do Heroku container colon release web. So while this is uploading, I'll just head back over to the instructions so you can see where we're at. Okay, so we logged in. Okay, then we logged into the container registry. Okay, we skipped this step because we'd already created an image. Okay, so this is the last thing we have to do. Once our image gets pushed, then we just have to release it. So deploy the changes. All right, it looks like the push was successful. So now all we need to do is release this container as our web deployment. So we'll do Heroku container release web and then dash A for the name of the app. So this is interview dash app dash Gina. All right, it says it's done. So let's head over to Heroku and let's click on open app to see if we can successfully open our app on Heroku on the web. All right, and there it is. It looks like it was successful. We can also test to make sure this is successful by heading back over to VS Code, going to our interview predictor.py and using our client code in order to make a request to our newly deployed web apps endpoint for predict. So I'm going to change this to use HTTPS colon slash slash, and then 
my URL for my app. So this is interview-app-gina.herokuapp.com. And now I'm going to run this Python script and see if I get a response back. I do. The prediction is false. Let's change PhD to no and make sure that the tree is properly traversed for these new attribute values and we get a prediction of true. We do. Awesome. So I'm going to head back over to interview app.py and summarize what we did. Okay, so for 2a, we built a Docker image locally and we did this ourselves with the Docker build command. We gave the image a general name and a latest tag and then we came back and said, okay, great. Now we're going to change the tag to match or the name and the tag to match what Heroku expects. And then we're going to push that image to the registry. And that's what we did. If we didn't want to ourselves run the Docker build command, I'll just reiterate that if you follow the documentation for pushing a pre-built image to the container registry, you'll see that uh, right here, building and pushing an image, to build an image and push it to the container registry, make sure your directory contains a Docker file and run this command. Okay, if you don't want to run the Docker build command yourself and you know have to provide that image name and tag that matches the Heroku registry naming convention, then just run this command instead of the Docker build and the Docker tag and the Docker push. Uh, this will do all of that for you. Here are those two commands that we ran because we pushed an existing image. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can do 2B, which in contrast to 2A, you don't build the Docker image locally. You instead push your source code that contains a Docker file to uh, get remote on Heroku's site and define how to build and deploy your app with heroku.yaml and Heroku will use its resources to build your image on their servers and then deploy it. So stay tuned for that if you wanna see another way to deploy a web app, namely a Flask, a Python Flask web app to Heroku using Docker. Thanks for watching.